What's good, sports gamers? And with MLB The Show 24 now out, both new and returning gamers are possibly both finding out how hard it is to lay off the low and away slider. Or that awkward moment when you and your opponent both realize you can't hit a fastball. Well, we got you. And with this video, I'm here to help you level up your hitting game by going over what you need to know and apply to your hitting in MLB The Show 24. I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online. And all right, let's get it. One of the most annoying things about playing MLB The Show 24 or online is playing against an opponent that throws nothing but balls. And you know why he's annoying? Because you're swinging at those pitches outside the zone, but you get mad at them, right? Trust me, I've been there. You're not old, hittable pitches all game. You're gonna have to force them to throw strikes. Now there are guys who are just scared to throw strikes and would rather walk seven than throw one pitch in the zone. But even they eventually come around if you're patient enough. Improving your patience firstly starts with realizing you don't have to swing at every pitch. A basic trick you can do to help yourself is to sit and wait for certain pitches, like for example a fastball. As a result, it helps you react faster when you do see a fastball and helps you become less likely to swing at off-speed and breaking pitches, which are usually thrown for balls. And watch your discipline improve and up your opponent's chances of actually giving you something to hit when they notice you're not taking the bait. If you aren't using zone hidden in MOB to show 24, you need to ASAP. It's gonna be a bit difficult to start, but hey, this is what a lot of this video is for. But it by far gives you the most control and best chance at placing the ball where you want all over the field by making you deal with a PCI to hit the ball, which stands for plate coverage indicator, which the goal is to hit the ball right in the middle of it with the best timing possible to land those sweet perfects and the PCI consists of three parts. The middle, which again is where you want to be crushing the pitches in, the inner and outer region, which will be saving you with foul balls instead of strikeouts. Each part of the PCI, depending on the player's stats, will range in size. And they also come with four different designs for each one that you can customize in your controller settings to your liking. Also in your controller settings, you can turn off different sections of the PCI that you want to have shown to you or not to help improve your focus and lessen the distraction of this big reticle in your face. I prefer to just have on my middle and inner PCI with the altitude and either bad art, which can help remind me how you need to swing on certain pitches or Starfighter for my inner region. Or you can just turn it off altogether, but that's personal preference. You can also change the color, I always offer something that stands out against the green grass. A frustrating issue that can arise when using zone hitting is overrunning the pitch when using the left stick. Who doesn't love it when you pop up a gift pitch down the middle because you just had to move your left stick or ground out a high and then fastball you knew was coming because your left stick overshot past the target. Now there are two ways you can help yourself solve these issues. First is your thumb placement. You can wait until the last possible second to move your left stick when you're about to hit the swing button, so there's less pressure to do something until it's time. You can do this by hovering above the left stick so you're less likely to want to move it, or putting less pressure on the left stick as your thumb rests on it, so you're more relaxed and not forced to do something. And you also want to make it a mission to wait until the ball gets as close as possible to the plate. Because as it currently stands, you move it when you think it's the appropriate time, right? And you end up overriding pitches in certain spots and moving out of the way on down the middle pitches. So we'll opt to move it as late as possible and weirdly it may actually align your timing better and have you moving it at just the right time and you end up lining up pitches more consistently and waiting long enough to where it gives you more info about the pitch. Where you're like, wait, this is coming right down the middle. I don't need to move my left stick. When batting with the camera view looking into the outfield, it's so important to find where the ball comes from out of the pitch delivery and focus on that direct area. And you want to make sure it's that same spot every time because if not, then your results won't be consistent. You want to do this to avoid getting caught up in somebody's delivery and losing the ball. And like I mentioned before, maintain consistency in picking up the pitch. The more focused you are, the better you will be tracking the ball towards the plate and pick it up if it's a fastball, sinker, or something in the dirt and lay off. The best backdrops to help with your focus are in the minor league stadium because it's usually just a blank wall, opposed to the major league ones who have a lot of stuff going on. 
Playing MLB The Show 24, there are three types of swings you can do if you're using zone hitting that all affect how big or small your PCI will be. Contact swing, which you do by holding the circle button on PlayStation or B on Xbox, lets you hit more pitches because your PCI will be bigger, but for less exit velocities, which means how hard you're able to hit each ball and how far they can go. Normal swing, which is X and A on Xbox respectively, and power swing, which is square and X on Xbox respectively, gives you more oomph in your swings, but in trade of a smaller PCI. So you're more likely to actually miss the pitch when you swing with this. And quite frankly, you're gonna wanna use the normal swing for about 95% of your at-bats. The game has worked like this for a long while now, where the normal swing gives you enough power, where opting for power and a smaller PCI just isn't worth the trade-off. Now, two strike counts opting for a contact swing, which makes your PCI bigger, which allows you to touch more pitches, can be annoying for the opponent, but beneficial for you with certain guys when you need to make contact to move players over. This can be your best friend. One of the biggest holes a lot of gamers have is they tend to pull everything thrown their way, especially in righty versus righty and lefty lefty matchups which means they have the same timing swing no matter where the pitch is thrown, which as a result makes the outside part of the plate a safe space for pitchers for weak contact, which again is why down and away sliders are so effective against a lot of players because you have to wait longer to have optimal contact on it. So this goes back to making it a focus to let the ball travel to the plate a bit longer than you would have before, before you react to it. This can unlock more information about the pitch and how you should react to it. Basic knowledge about baseball is pitches on the inside, you have to react the fastest. Pitches on the outside, you have to wait the longest. So your bat or uh, your virtual bat can properly direct it the other way. Now another way to help yourself reach pitches you find yourself unable to is the PCI anchor system. This lets you lock your play coverage indicator, which again is this thing, into different spots within the strike zone, rather than always starting in the middle of the plate or holding your left stick in a certain spot yourself. So this can be super helpful to reach those fastballs that are eating you up or low pitches you're just missing. To use the PCI anchor system, first you wanna go into your controller settings and make sure it's turned on. Then scrolling over it, there are two options, free and preset. If you set it to preset, you can lock your PCI into one of eight different locations in the strike zone. And if you choose free, you can lock your PCI anywhere in the strike zone. Going down, you can also select whether you want your PCI anchor to reset back to the middle after each at bat, after each inning, or if you want it to last the entire game, which I would prefer if you want to dabble in it. Also, if you select a preset PCI anchor, you can turn the dots you lock into off from your view. While at the plate to lock it into your desired location, first move your left stick to that spot and then click in the left stick. If you have chosen preset, it will lock into the nearest dot. Now you can still move the left stick after you do this, but it will just return to your locked in position instead of the default middle now. And clicking in the left stick again during that bat will unlock it from its position and return it to the middle. This is an excellent feature to further help you if you're struggling placing your PCI in certain parts of the plate. The very first thing you should tackle in MLB The Show 24 is finding your preferred camera view and actually sticking with it for a few games to see if you truly like it or not, and not switching immediately after popping up for an at bat. Each camera gives you something while taking something away. If you want to use your Xbox or PlayStation to the best of its ability and want to take in the sights and sounds of the park, Maybe something further back can pique your interest while simultaneously making it a bit harder to pick up on pitches and if they're going to drop off the table or not. But with most things, the longer you use something, the better you do become at it so you can limit those weaknesses if you use it for a while. While the popular Strike Zone camera views have you clearly focused on the current pitch and literally nothing else. The biggest pro is since you are so close, it lets you read pitches the best, but you literally won't be able to even see the full batter. So experiment with camera views to start and give each a legit try to find the best one that suits you. Another valuable feature that you must leverage is looking at your pitch history by holding down the right trigger button on your controller. 
you can see the pictures thrown to you in your previous at bat or the current one. So you can get a clue into what he might throw at you again if they got you out. You'll be surprised how often guys will see a batter and automatically in their head go, oh, I'll throw him this and repeat it without even thinking. Similarly, holding left on the D-pad shows you when your opponent typically utilizes their pitches and your success against them. This data-driven approach removes some of the emotion from the game and point blank tells you, Chris, he might not throw Harper another fastball the rest of the game after that last at bat. If you have forgotten what pitch he threw, utilizing this information effectively can help you work around the margins and hey, even steal a run or two if you're clued in at the right time. Now, I briefly mentioned this, but don't underestimate the power of practice and custom practice. If you're struggling with recognizing pitches from certain guys because of their funky delivery or speed or break on a pitch, this is your go-to solution to get warmed up before you hit the field. You used to couldn't be as specific with what you want the pitchers to throw, so I'd never take this mode for granted. The PCI Anchor System can also help you avoid hitting into double plays by setting your PCI in the lower part of the strike zone so you don't hit the ball in the ground as often. Now this isn't foolproof, but it does help the times where you aren't able to get your PCI down in time and hit a Donovan McNabb dirt ball as we know double plays are some of the most crushing plays you can make in the game. If you're feeling overwhelmed at the plate and just swung at two junk pitches, hit down on the D-pad to call a timeout at the plate to get yourself an extra few seconds to collect yourself. And lastly, let's be honest, the game is going to screw you over a lot. Getting a perfect is half the battle. You just have to hope it's not going to directly land into somebody's glove. To protect your emotions, come to terms with the fact that this is going to happen a lot and in big situations. The key is to do it so often that the ones you do get hosed on won't matter as much in the end. So all right, sports gamers, I hope this video was able to help you out and the tips I provided help elevate your game in MLB The Show 24. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more MLB The Show 24 content. And hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.